So then the next one we have is our intradermal injection, which is the TB skin test. On this one at the end, I'm not only walking you through it, but I'm also going to give you the instructions that you give a patient, okay? Um, if you don't mind, sir, I'm going to ask that you sit in the venipuncture chair. I like for you to be able to relax the arm and have somewhere to put it. Perfect. Y'all know these chairs. I don't know if y'all do know this. I don't know. But these chairs are adjustable mm -hmm. up and down um, for the comfort. So if you twist this, you can move the patient's arm up and down. This is ideal for venipuncture. Right. Tidy Where does it come from? You can go higher with this one. That's fine. I'm a little taller, so I like everything to be no noticed when I did injections. My patient was at my eye level. Um, I like for things to be up where I'm comfortable. Comfort, comfort is very important because you've got to hold that position for however long the procedure is going to take. Um, and I believe in taking care of your back. Even when you're taking your blood pressures, you imagine taking 30 people's blood pressure in a day and you're in this position. It's not good for you. Okay. So use the equipment around you to your advantage. Um, and don't, if you're running around looking for a medication that says TB skin test, you're never going to find it. Okay, so we need to remember PPD, purified protein derivative. That is the medication that you're injecting for a TB skin test. Okay, um, so no matter where you live in the world, it doesn't matter. No matter where you work, you are always going to draw up 0 0.1 mLs for the TB skin test. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, Making sure. Maybe you went to another country where they did 0 0.2. I don't know. But here, right dose. 0 0.1. Okay? Well, I said right. Right dose. <laughs> yes, right dose. So um, we use a 27 gauge needle, um, which is a smaller needle. We're only going under the surface of the skin with the bevel. We're not going any deeper like we do for an injection. Again, we're injecting 0 0.1. Uh, one of the main things you need to remember about this injection is that you do not aspirate. We aspirate it on the intermuscular and subcutaneous. This one we will not aspirate, okay? We're just gonna go in, only the bevel, and inject. You have to get what's called a wheel, which looks like a little bubble under the skin. It's also called a bleb, B-L-E-B, -E a wheel or a bleb, okay? If the patient asks you questions about the TB skin test, please do not answer if you don't know what you're talking about, okay? So first of all, I've had people say, hey, what are you injecting me with? And they'll say TB. <laughs> no, okay? So just let the patient know this is a test to find out whether or not they have been exposed to TB. It does not, a reaction does not mean that the patient is positive. We have to back it up with a chest x-ray that can only be ordered by the physician, okay? So don't panic. Some people automatically have a reaction to PPD. They uh, Usually if they tell you that, don't waste their time giving them a PPD and making them come back. Just get the chest x-ray, okay? bypass everything else if they know that they're going to have a reaction that would be for a person who's had several of them all right so chest x-ray is ordered we'll talk when you guys get back we will talk about the sizes of the in duration that means if something happens um, if the patient has a reaction or we see a not red mark anything on the arm that's an in duration the measurement of that is going to depend on level of exposure okay usually doctors involved in all that part your job is to make sure that you place the PPD correctly. Okay, that is number one. We've got our patient information. We know allergies. Have you ever had a TB skin test before? I have, yes. Yeah, how long ago? Hmm, approximately two years. Two years, okay. So we usually need to do once a year for a TB skin test, especially people who are in healthcare. And I believe if it's been longer than a year, they do a two-step, mm -hmm. okay? So that means they would just have to come back a second time within two weeks. Mm -hmm of the first one to get a second test, okay? So, usually on the paperwork the patient brings to you, it will tell you if they need a two-step or just a regular TB, okay? I have been in situations to where um, I don't really need the physician if the TB skin test is negative, if it looks fine. I don't need to bother the physician with that. We can go ahead and sign off on it. If we see a problem, red mark, angry, not anything like that, don't let the patient leave. We need to get the physician and let them take a look at it before we let them leave, okay? All right, so I like to use the forearm. Anterior forearm is what we're using for the TB skin test. This little area here, we don't wanna to be too far down here. We don't wanna to be too far up here. So right here in this area, I like to use this as a landmark. Everybody's got that little fat piece right there. I'm sure it has an anatomical name. But the little fat piece right here, that's what I like to use. 
brachioradialis. Doc says it's called the brachioradialis. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna clean. I've drew up my 0 0.1 of medication. I'm cleaning that whole area. Um, it's the patient's, it's, it's up to the patient what arm they want it on, okay? That's what I usually give them the option, which arm would you like on it? Um, and uh, what else do I, usually which arm do they like? I try to make sure that if they fold their arm, it's not so high up that it's gonna be touching here. And then if they wear a watch or anything, of course, that's why we don't want it down here. All right, so on this one, we're going at a 15 degree angle. Bevel should be facing up, always. Bevel always up, okay? 15 degree angle is about the same angle you're going in when you do venipuncture. So rather than doing counter pressure like we did injections, um, the intramuscular and subcutaneous, this time we're gonna pull tight as if we were giving doing venipuncture. So we're gonna pull the skin tight. We're gonna take the bevel and we're only going to go right under the surface of the skin with the bevel. All of the 0 0.1 until it's all done. And then you're gonna come straight out, okay? We don't wipe this, we don't rub it, don't scratch it, okay? This is called a wheel or a bleb is what you need to get in order to know that it was done correctly. It'll go away shortly, it doesn't stay for very long. So if it disappears, don't worry about it. So the instructions to the patient is please do not wash it, do not rub it, do not um, scratch this. I need you to come back in 48 to 72 hours. Today is Tuesday. I need you to come back on Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, around this same time, and we'll have it looked at. Do you have any questions? No, thank you. No questions, okay? And again, don't rub it, dab it, nothing. The most you might do if a little bit of liquid comes out is just kind of dab around it if you need to, but otherwise you want to leave it alone. Okay. Make sure that you document everything and that the patient understood when you're coming back, when you told the patient to come back. All your injections, you document the lot number as well as the expiration number. Sometimes this EHR thing, sometimes now is kind of put in there automatically, but if not, make sure that you document what bottle and the expiration you got that out of. Anything I'm leaving out? Any questions from anybody that I might be leaving out? Good to go. Okay, so those three injections, you have the information in your notes. That is what I will be looking for to happen during your checkoffs. A nice, <clears throat> smooth injection, no mistakes, and be able to answer questions that you're asked pertaining to that particular injection.